It's a sad day when we learn that Canada's official poet laureate is underworked. Mr. George Elliot Clark is the gentleman in question, a professor, a prize-winning poet, appointed in early January. Trouble is, since he was called upon to be the national bard, his appointers have kind of forgotten he's around. I don't think anybody in Ottawa really has a clue about who's supposed to ask me to do anything, said Mr. Clark recently. And while there can't be much dispute about the first part of that sentence, what the people in Ottawa have a clue about being an abiding Canadian mystery, on the second half, he raises a valid point. Why are they ignoring him and Canadian verse? Truth is, Canada has always been unkind to our poets. Only a handful have penetrated the national mind. Most people are stumped when they get past Sam McGee. There are strange things done in the midnight sun. From there, all is silence. Who now remembers the great James McIntyre, an early Canadian woodworker, but a poet, a man who loved cheese, cheese more than life. He was the bard of Brie, the Chaucer of cheese whiz, the Milton of Stilton, who did for cheese what Homer did for Troy. His early work reeks of inspiration. The ancient poets ne'er did dream that Canada was land of cream. Where everything did solid freeze, they never hoped or looked for cheese. McIntyre saw in cheese what lesser poets saw in love and beauty. He could be picky, though. Our muse, it doth refuse to sing of cheese made early in the spring. When cows give milk from spring fodder, you cannot make a good chatter, cheddar. Imagine what this man could have done for Kraft dinner. McIntyre dreamed dreams, his majestic prophecy of a 10-ton cheese, out Coleridge's Coleridge, who hath prophetic vision sees in future times a 10-ton cheese. Well, his cheese odyssey masterwork was a poem about a real cheese made in Niagara that weighed 7,000 pounds. It is the paradise lost of curdled milk and begins, we have seen the queen of cheese lying quietly at your ease, gently fanned by evening breeze, thy fair form no flies there sees. It contains a warning of the youth, beware of these, for some of them might rudely squeeze and bite your cheek, then songs or glees we could not sing, O queen of cheese, and climaxes with, May you not receive a scar as we have heard that Mr. Harris intends to send you off as far as the world's mighty show at Paris. Now he was not, alas, a poet laureate. No parliamentarian tickled his fancy, but perhaps that example will wake our current MPs to do their duty and send Mr. Clark some prompts and cues to fire up his unasked muse. No poems or odes for cheese. We've had enough of these. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.